Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad, board certified physician in cardiology, interventional cardiology, and internal medicine. I'm here to help you with all the information you need for your heart health and inform you about the latest treatments in cardiology. If you are new to this channel, then definitely consider hitting the subscribe button below and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. Today, I will talk to you about sudden cardiac arrest, abbreviated as SCA, and how to improve survival by performing basic life support in the form of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, abbreviated as CPR. The exact incidence of sudden cardiac arrest in the United States is unknown, but estimates vary from 180,000 to 450,000 per year. The most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest is heart attacks leading to the development of deadly irregularity of heart beating, medically known as ventricular fibrillation. This is shown in this image in the lower tracing, reflecting fast irregular heart beats originating from the lower part of the heart. Despite the development of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, electrical defibrillation and other advanced resuscitation techniques Survival after out-of-hospital sudden cardiac arrest is only 10 to 15%. There are a few steps that have to be systematically followed. These steps constitute what we call the chain of survival, as shown here in this image. Your role as a rescuer is to execute the first four steps of the chain until arrival of help from the emergency medical service. Step number one. Recognize sudden cardiac death or sudden cardiac arrest. Rapid recognition of sudden cardiac arrest is the essential first step of successful resuscitation. If you witness a person collapse or come across an apparently unresponsive person, you should confirm unresponsiveness by tapping the person on the shoulder and shouting, are you all right? If the person does not respond, then check for arterial pulse in the neck and breathing. If these are absent, then you should move on to step number two, which is to call for help. If you are on your own, then call the emergency number from your cell phone. This is 911 in North America, 999 in the United Kingdom, and the Republic of Ireland, 112 in Europe, and other numbers in different countries. You should clearly state the emergency as sudden cardiac arrest and give your location. Then you should move on to step number three, which is performing high quality cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. Coronary perfusion pressure and retain of spontaneous circulation are maximized when excellent chest compressions are performed. The mantra of the American Heart Association is push hard and push fast on the center of the chest with the goal to maintain the rate of chest compressions at 100 to 120 compressions per minute and compress the chest at least 5 cm, which is 2 inches, but no more than 6 cm, which is 2.5 inches with each downstroke. Allow for the chest to recoil completely after each downstroke. You should also minimize the frequency and duration of any interruptions and should not exceed 10 seconds. The rescuer places the heel of one hand in the center of the chest over the lower portion of the sternum and the heel of the other hand on top of the first. If the patient is not breathing, then you should provide ventilation as well. You should first extend the neck to open the airway as shown here, making sure there is no blockage and then deliver ventilation. Proper ventilation for adults include two ventilations after every 30 compressions and each ventilation over no more than one second. Provide enough air to observe the chest rise and give one asynchronous ventilation every six to eight seconds, giving a total of about 10 breaths per minute. If a portable defibrillator termed automated external defibrillator or AED for short is available, then proceed to step number four. The AED should be attached to the patient as shown. The AAD switches on automatically once it is open. When attached, you should interrupt the resuscitation for a few seconds to allow the defibrillator to analyze the heart rhythm and the AED will talk back to you and inform you about 
what you should do. It might tell you to stay in the way as it is about to deliver an electric shock, or it might tell you to resume chest compressions and ventilation. It is essential to minimize delays and interruptions in the performance of excellent chest compressions. Therefore, cardiac rhythm analysis should only be performed during a planned interruption at the two minute interval following a complete cycle of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. Following any interruption, sustained chest compressions are needed to regain pre-interruption rates of blood flow. You should continue resuscitation until the arrival of the emergency medical team, who will take over resuscitation from that point onwards. Your role as a rescuer is to maintain the circulation by chest compressions and maintain oxygenation by ventilations until the arrival of the emergency medical personnel. To recap, I show again the steps of the chain of survival. Confirm that sudden cardiac arrest occurred by asking for response from the patient, checking the carotid pulse in the neck and checking for breathing. If these are absent, then call for help from your cell phone or ask a bystander to call for help from his or her phone. Then perform CPR by providing chest compressions at 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Compress the chest at least 5 cm, which is 2 inches, and allow the chest to recoil completely between each compression. Minimize frequency and duration of any interruption. Each ventilation should be delivered over no more than one second and must be delivered without excessive force. Only enough volume to confirm chest rise. If a portable AED defibrillator is available, then it should be attached to the patient and the instructions delivered by the AED followed. Early defibrillation is critical to the survival of patients with ventricular fibrillations. Continue the basic life support CPR until arrival of an emergency medical team who will take over resuscitation from this point onwards. If you have any question about what I presented to you today or any cardiology question in general, then subscribe to my channel, share your question in the comment section below, and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Dr. Bolat, and then send me a private Twitter direct message and I will reply to you. Please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.